Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Matt M0 DQW, and this is the Tech Minds YouTube channel. Now, about three years ago, I showed you a cool little SDR switch box, and what that done, it allowed you to share your antenna with your HF radio and an SDR receiver at the same time. And then when you press transmit on your radio, it then bypassed the SDR switch box. Now at the time, three years ago, it was kind of a competitor, I guess, for the MFJ products, SDR1708 or something like that. I can't quite remember. But anyway, fast forward to now, and there's a new one on the market. Now I thought I'd show this to you. This is the MX S1 SDR switch. Now it's got a couple of switches at the front, uh, for power on and forward power. And you've also got this little bar graph here down the bottom, which shows forward power and reflective power. Also on the back, you've got a load of other connections as well. Now I must admit, it does have a rather nice quality feel to it. The outer casing is made from metal and it's the perfect size for sitting on your shack desk next to your radios. The front panel has a power on and off switch. And then the other switch next to it changes the LED bar graph from forward power or reflective power, and this operates when you're transmitting. Obviously, this doesn't replace your SWR meter, but it does provide some useful information if you're transmitting. Plus, it looks pretty cool with those LEDs flickering up and down while you're talking on SSB. And one of the issues with the MFJ SDR switch is that the connections were in a rather strange top mounted position, whereas this SDR switch, all the connections are on the rear. Now there's two SO239 sockets, one for your antenna and then one for your transceiver. You also have an SMA female socket, which you can then use the included SMA patch cable to connect to your SDR receiver. There's also a 3.5 millimeter socket titled send, and this is where you connect the included cable to your radio's PTT line. Essentially putting the SDR switch into bypass mode and sending your transmit signal to the antenna. There's also a 12 volt DC barrel socket, but I tested this on my 13.8 volt shack supply and it worked perfectly well. Now the three lower 3.5 millimeter sockets, I believe are for audio switching between a transceiver and an SDR out to a headphone jack. Now personally, I won't use that, but it's nice to have it and need it rather than need it and not have it, I guess. Now, as mentioned a moment ago, you do get some accessories. The first is an SMA patch cable, and this connects between the SDR switch and your SDR receiver. Obviously, you can use your own cables if you want to. We then have the DC power cable, which connects to your shack power supply. We then have another cable in which one end is terminated with a 3.5 millimeter plug. Now, this is so that you can make up your own PTT control. This 3.5 millimeter plug on this cable would plug into the send port on the back of the SDR switch. Now you also get three radio connectors. One is a RCA phono style connector. The other is a Yaesu accessory port connector. And the last one here is an ICOM accessory port connector. Now I'll be testing this SDR switch with my ICOM IC7100. So I'll use that last one I just showed you. Now you will obviously have to consult your own manual for your own radio, for which rear connection is the PTT line. Now the SDR switch requires a low signal or ground on the center pin to activate PTT. But just be careful if you're going to connect this directly to your radio. Now some radios will not be able to handle any floating voltages or current, so you may have to make your own isolated switch in between, or maybe something like a relay or an optocoupler. Incidentally, there's no real specifications about any kind of transient voltages or current on the send port in the manual of this SDR switch. So just be careful. So here we have the SDR switch hooked up between my antenna and the radio. And then using the SDR output connection, I'm using an SMA patch cable that goes off to the SDR receiver, which in this case is an SDR Play RSPDXR2. The IC7100 is also connected to the computer via USB cable so that the SDR software, SDR Uno, can control the frequency of the radio at the same time. Now this is performed using OmniRig, which is a little man in the middle application which syncs the frequency and mode between the radio and the SDR software. You'll notice here, as I change frequency on the SDR software, the frequency on the radio will also change. Remember, Tango, 
GW4YNT in South Wales near Port Talbot. OK, so let's see this in action as I transmit. Uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing, M0 DQW testing, uh, M0 DQW testing, M0 DQW testing, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing, M0 DQW testing, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Mike Zero, Delta Quebec Whiskey, good afternoon, you have a strong signal, 5-9 plus, operator Tina. Yeah, very good afternoon, Tina. The operator name here is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango, around 15 miles northwest of London. Thank you very much for the contact and hope you get many more contacts in the log today. This is M0DQW. Thanks a lot. Matt, thanks for the TSO and good luck for your team, for your soccer or football team this, this evening. 73-88. 73, bye bye. Now for those of you that are interested to see what's inside this little magic box, then let me quench your curiosity. The main board is totally different to the SDR switch that I featured a few years ago, and by all accounts it looks pretty well laid out. There is a little jumper next to that black relay. Now I'm not entirely sure what this is for, but if it's anything like the other SDR switch, then it will be to change the receive signal to be routed to the SDR only and not SDR and transceiver. But by default, the receive signal does go to your transceiver and the SDR at the same time while in receive mode. What's also interesting is that there appears to be a couple of little light bulbs mounted on the board. Now, back in the day when I used to use CB radio, you could buy, and you probably still can, low power dummy loads, which were effectively just a light bulb. So I hooked up the output of the SDR switch to a dummy load and then tried transmitting through it like I would normally. Now the bulbs did not light up, but if I disconnected the send cable, which tells the SDR switch to go into transmit mode and then transmit on the radio, you can see that one of the bulbs actually starts to light up. Now obviously you do not want to transmit into the SDR switch without the mode being in transmit but it's nice to see at least some form of protection if things go wrong with that PTT line. Anyway, guys, there we go. That's an overview of this new SDR switch. And to be honest, I think it's actually pretty well made and it does what it says on the tin. It's definitely in a nicer form factor than the ones that we've seen before, especially as all the connections are on the rear and you've got a couple of switches on the front. Until the next video, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.